Hi, thank you for joining us with this SD1 Nebula Orchestrator introduction. So I guess we should start with what is SD1 in the first place uh, before we even talk about kind of its benefits. Um, so SD1 stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network and essentially it allows us to centrally manage the WAN side of all our connectivity and allows us to create a global policies over all of the infrastructure to ease the deployment. Many enterprises have kind of looked at this already in, in the past and used it to simplify and create a more you know faster and more reliable approach to traditional methods which you know they would use like an MPLS or a tier one ISP. They've also used it to reduce overheads which are often associated with that type of delivery as well. Whilst SD WAN is widely recognized in enterprise today. We feel that, you know, the SMB market really needs to try and adopt this type of technology. And we've brought this type of technology into this marketplace to try and help with the traditional deployments where we can see vast improvements in reliability performance over traditional VPN networks, i.e. site-to-site -site connectivity, as well as being able to manage multiple sites or multiple customers under the same platform. As we go into this uh, presentation, we'll start to sort of talk around some of the complications and some of the problems that we see from both sides, whether it be the customer or whether it be the actual value-added reseller or the MSPs, the managed service providers, who are looking for network diversity, improvements in connectivity, simplified approach to delivery, uh, and even management um, on a scale, whether it be for smaller customers or whether it be for lots and lots of different customers. So let's start by looking at some of the challenges that traditional site design networks uh, have and looking at the challenges from a point of view of the actual end users, the, the, you know, the SMBs themselves. So, you know, not the actual installers or the IT company or the managed service provider, but the actual requirements of a client and you know the challenges that they are kind of having to tackle so first they have a greater reliance on cloud you know whether it be office 365 or whether they're carrying their own data infrastructure in aws or whether they're using things like dropbox these are all you know cloud technologies and you know the internet connectivity itself needs to be reliable and they and the customer has a reliance on that to gain access to it so obviously much more uh, reliance on the internet itself as well as the reliability of the internet itself so when we talk reliability we're not just talking about on or off we're talking about low latency latency it has a larger impact on applications, especially voice or video. So if we have a high latency, then it means that you know things like voice and video will start to jutter, break up, you know, and the video, for example, will go pixely, drop out, and even you know lose connectivity. I mean, we've all seen the the time when you've been on the internet and it's a little little box will come up on skype for example and you know it will say you know poor connectivity and then all of a sudden it'll start going bitty and dropping out and losing some of the the video quality so you know people don't want this type of experience they want it to be seamless and and operate at its high efficiency we also have faster connectivity is is you know is a big challenge for SMB. So you know fast LAN today, as in we've got one gig and even ten gig LANs. Uh, even in SMBs, this is quite common. But we have extremely slow WAN connectivity, i.e., internet connectivity. Often the end users are looking for increase in security. You know, there's much more awareness of the challenges in security in today's environments, especially with you know the crypto lockers and things like that so smbs they have the challenge of maintaining this on their networks but don't necessarily have the expertise to do that they obviously need scalability you know the workforce is no longer just in you know individual offices often they're dotted about they could be small offices with two or three people in but it seems to be that this you know that trend has changed from one big office to lots of individuals or even people working from home where they need to dial in so we need still need to try and keep that scalability and connectivity for those as well Obviously, it goes without saying that our customers, you know, when they're looking at these challenges, they're also trying to look at how they can do it within a budget. 
whether it be for installation or ongoing, you know, ongoing costs for the connectivity itself. So let's look at the challenges for the value added resellers or the managed service providers. And although they have some similarities to the actual end customer, when they're delivering these services, they obviously, you know, they come across the actual technical elements that really defines what they can and can't deliver. So first and foremost, you know, they need to try and maximize on what the connectivity is available. I.e., you know, if they go to a rural area, what, what kind of connectivity can they actually get to deliver to the, their services to this site? Or even when they're in industrial estates, you know, sometimes the connectivity itself is also not that great. So they have to look at uh, what's available and try and maximize on that. They need easier control over the deployment and management. Often, if you're looking at site-to-site -site VPNs, traditionally it's static devices installed at each location. You have to dial into each one, configure each one independently. Maybe you have a bit of software that can centrally monitor them so that you could be a bit more proactive if something goes wrong. But the reality is that the control uh, and flexibility building this is not is you know is much more complicated, especially if you're going to scale out. Often we need to reduce the complexity, so not just you know the fact that you're going to install lots of them, but uh, especially as you scale out, some of the challenges are allowing the traffic to pass between all these devices, especially in a hub and spoke environment where you have a single uh, device in the center and you have you know lots of sites or you know satellite sites connected into the central core. It means that the routing between these sites, when traffic wants to go from one to site to another site via the hub, become extremely complicated and also very difficult to diagnose if something goes wrong. They can be very time consuming to find issues, especially in the routing tables. Remote bottlenecks. So when we talked about this hub and spoke environment, um, we need to remove the bottlenecks in an environment. For example, passing traffic through a central core can be extremely complex, but actually connecting all these sites together can be complicated as well, as we will demonstrate a bit further into this presentation. And, you know, clients, they just want the network to work. So, you know, to remove the bottlenecks, you need to improve the way that these types of sites operate. So additionally, we need to simplify network diversity. It kind of ties in with the first point where we need to maximize on what's available. But at the same time, there could be, you know, different types of internet service providers at each location that you want to kind of utilize to create, you know, reliability or failover in these environments. And often if you're looking for, you know, connecting sites to sites together, it can be more complicated by using different providers. And the idea is that if you want to create a layer over the top of it, while it can be done with traditional site-to-site -site networks, it's not as straightforward to manage or maintain and not as seamless as we would like it to be. And with SD-WAN, we try to address this kind of challenge, which we will um, you know, go into a little bit further into the presentation. Additionally, value-added resellers and MSPs who are managing networks for their clients, they want to improve the user experience. Uh, for those of you who have delivered side-to-site -side VPNs or have side-to-site -side VPNs today, you will be aware of the fact that there isn't a great deal of control of what goes down a VPN. So it makes it incredibly difficult to tailor the traffic for the business applications for the, each individual customer. Although there are some controls, it's, it becomes incredibly difficult, especially if you want to do it across the board on a larger scale where you have lots of different sites talking to each other. So let's start by looking at a traditional site-to-site -site VPN and how they kind of operate today. So in order to build a site-to-site -site VPN, i.e. a connectivity between two sites, a tunnel that allows you to securely pass traffic between these two sites, you, you basically put two devices in each site, um, a firewall for example, and you build a VPN tunnel, IPsec tunnel between these two places. There are only very simple connectivity checks to see whether this is actually up or down. And this uh, basically is controlled by either doing a ping, like bouncing a message off the other device, or whether the physical port is down to say whether the connection is alive or whether it's dead. There is actually no test to check the quality of the line, whether it's degraded, whether it's losing packets, etc. Although you could use the ping Many devices that just have a yes, it's replied or no, it's not replied. It's extremely difficult to manage the traffic that goes between these, especially if you want to push it 
uh, via firewall to start blocking traffic this becomes extremely complex and very difficult to manage and that basically that means that you can't really traffic shape or manage any complexity to create this user experience we've just talked about a minute ago as we start to add more and more sites to our infrastructure so in our example we have two offices uh, in the UK and we have one in Denmark and as we want to pass traffic between site 2 to site 1 we have to go via the hub which is essentially our Denmark office this creates uh, a routing rule that's required to say when site 2 requires to go to site 1 it needs to go via the Denmark office and vice versa for traffic to come back from it, it needs to go backwards so we start to build up uh, these rules to go via a hub and whilst this is acceptable on a small scale the problem is as the sites scale out it becomes incredibly difficult and also additionally creates this choke point in the central network so we, at this point we have very complex routing that has to tell every single site where each one is so imagine every time you had to go through the door you'd have to ask somebody for where the next door is and the next door and the next door we'd have to create a, a routing rule manually at each one of these points in a traditional site-to-site -site VPN network. Additionally, like we said before, this choke point where all the traffic is actually centrally coming through Denmark means that we have to have a uh, large firewall and large amount of bandwidth at this central point to carry all the traffic to each site. To combat this in traditional deployments, many people decide to create IPsec tunnels between every individual site. I mean, I know that certainly I've done this in the past when I've had to compensate for problems like this. To remove this choke point, I essentially build a VPN between every site, meaning that I have to then build routing rules to allow each site to communicate with each other individually. This becomes incredibly complex, especially if you are scaling out. I mean, it's not so bad for two or three sites, but or even that becomes quite complicated and becomes a lot of routes you know essentially every single point we need to know where every single point is and how to get there this is further complicated when we start to add additional lines for example let's say we create a primary and secondary line so we have two internet lines for each site we then additionally have to create a routing rule that says if you go down this line first, if this line doesn't work, then you fail over to this one. Um, this again creates an enormous amount of complexity. And what I'm trying to demonstrate here is we are getting an increase in complexity in deployment. It becomes incredibly difficult to manage afterwards. And as you want to scale out, it becomes almost impossible to remember where everything is meant to go. This problem is further complicated by the fact that Again, as we go back to the beginning, we we have no way to manage or monitor this line's quality. So if this line degrades, i.e. it's losing packets, it's not reliable, the typical connectivity checks in most devices are, like we said before, up or down. And if packets of data start to get lost, then the quality of the line is is bad but the line is still actually functioning so that means that the experience for the end user is that actually it's not very good quality and things like phone calls and videos will become extremely choppy and will begin to start buffering and reality is we want to try and automate that process so that if there is poor quality that it picks a better line to operate in so how, how do we combat a lot of these problems that we've kind of just discussed? So SD-WAN kind of introduces a, a bunch of tools or a, a consolidation of functionality that we've kind of put together to try and combat all the challenges that are traditionally given to us in site-to-site -site VPNs and try and ease the process of deployment, management, and even scalability. So first off, obviously, we have this zero-touch provisioning called ZTP, which allows us to deploy uh, SD-WAN devices to site very quickly and very easily to minimize operational time and exp expense in the deployment phase. We have functionality that we have designed to do real-time monitor of path quality, so dynamic path selection, which enables it to basically pick the best quality line 
and transmit down that line. This obviously combats the problems that we've just been discussing about the fact that you can't monitor a line for quality, only whether it's up or down. WAN optimization means that we, because we're controlling both WAN points, we can actually improve the quality of connectivity between them or the way that we actually transmit data between these because we're managing both points. We have content filtering, so it allows us to do uh, content filtering on the HTTP and HTTPS traffic, as well as be able to identify applications through our application intelligence, which can and then in turn be used to prioritize applications and their behavior over the, the connectivity itself. We also talked about you know, the fact that you know to build a very complicated network to avoid this bottleneck process, we would have to essentially build site-to-site -site VPNs everywhere. So, so by using dynamic mesh VPN technology, it allows us to dynamically build and create routing tables on the fly to allow this site-to-site -site connectivity to take place but without the complexity of writing lots and lots of rules and allow the system to, to do this dynamically when it's required and also seamlessly so that the customer or the end user is unaware that this is taking place in the background. So to demonstrate some of those challenges and how the features actually work we have some diagrams to give you a visual aid to understand how they work and how they operate. So to start with, we'll look at application intelligence and WAN optimization and see how that can help. Because we're controlling both sides of the connection, we can optimize the TCP packet itself, the maximize the efficiency of the data transmission itself as well, uh, along with looking at the latency and the packet loss to help mitigate any issues. When we combine these protocols or optimizations, with the fact that we can prioritize the bandwidth according to application in real time, it means that we become super efficient at how we can transmit data across these two points. So when we're using SD-WAN, we can improve the speed, the efficiency of the connectivity versus a traditional IPsec VPN. At the beginning, we discussed about the fact that, you know, we want to measure the connectivity rather than just check whether it's up or down, because this obviously gives us problems, especially when a line is degraded. So dynamic path selection gives us the ability to monitor and manage the connection and in real time move traffic around without the user being aware so that it is always on the optimal best condition line. For example, you know, you're transferring voice.